Hello, my name is John Avrak, field CTO with Sigma. And today I'm going to show you how you can ask a question against your data. We're looking at a typical chart here, which shows revenue over time for different sales regions of an electronic retail store. And we can ask a natural language question such as where is there the most growth and what caused it? Now in just a minute, I'll show you how this is built. When I click that go button behind the scenes, we're using the AI query functionality of the warehouse to take the data that you see in the chart and respond with a response to the prompt here. So looking at the response, we can see that the West has the highest growth and it calls out specific numbers about where the growth actually happened and where the peak was. And you also notice some of the key growth drivers here. So we asked what caused it. And what's interesting about this answer here is that the LLM or large language model, which is powering this answer here, has knowledge about what's going on in the rest of the world, macroeconomic events, news events, and so on. And one of the great things about using AI to answer questions is that it doesn't just call out things that are in the data, like the numbers up here. It's also able to make correlations to things that are happening in the rest of the world that correlate with the actual data. And this is exactly how analysts think about problems. They don't just look at the data. They also think about what's happening outside of the scope of, of their data. So AI is great at answering this. What we can also do with this AI is we can do what we call a comparative analysis where we go a little bit deeper. So same chart, and now I can pick a region. Let's say I wanna pick this uh, mid-Atlantic region over here, which has had a kind of a decline in revenue. And I can pick two points. So I'm on a Mac here, I'm just command clicking on two different points. And the question in this case has already been formed for me. If I want, I can override it. Uh, but I'll just pick the default there. Uh, and then it wants me to select between two and five columns. So here we're selecting one region, picking two dates, and we can have it drill down a little bit deeper. Maybe we wanna look at things by st store state and brand, product tier, product type, and let's pick the store tier as well. And then click that go button and this gives the AI a chance to go deeper into one particular area and look at specific columns or attributes of interest so we can get a, a richer uh, answer from this response. Okay, so it's come back with the answer here. Now let's, let's look at the, the specifics. So you can see here we have category performance. So even though we don't see categories in the chart, it's calling out that gaming showed the steepest decline, negative 65%, uh, likely due to post-holiday seasonality. So it's also kind of drawing some conclusions there based on when it happened. Uh, then it looks points out smart home here and the video audio segments. Uh, down here, we have things about different states, uh, the New York market and Pennsylvania. And then we see things like premium brands and this answer here is particularly interesting because we have uh, Asus Rogue Gaming Revenue, which is a, a, a product category, uh, but then it also is pointing out the Virginia stores and the flagship Virginia stores. So flagship is a, a store tier looking back at our columns here. So it's actually combining multiple attributes and able to find a very specific slice of data uh, where revenue fell uh, over here. Now, people will ask all these different questions uh, against the data, and we can then capture all this information into a chat history. So every question that's been asked by everyone's been on the system is logged over here into what we call an input table. And the input table is something that Sigma has, which allows you to write back to the warehouse. And we can use this data to do things, for example, create a leaderboard, see who's asked the most questions over time, uh, see what kinds of questions they asked, and 
I'm going to click this summarize button in the top right. And this takes it a step further by taking all the questions that people have asked over the time and it's feeding it back into the AI to then say, hey, what are the kind of the themes of all these questions here? So over here in the response, we see that it's analyzed over 200 user prompts. And these are the key themes, things like uh, revenue spike explanations, COVID-19 business impacts, West region growth analysis. So this gives us a good idea of all the users of what kinds of things they're interested in. Uh, maybe it can inform me that I need to include other data in here that maybe I'm not providing uh, by default. Now there's one more thing I wanna show you, which is we can go back to uh, this first screen here and in the personality, I didn't change this before, but we can ask the same question and change the personality. So we'll say here, where is there the most growth? We'll just keep this question really simple this time. Now behind the scenes, we'll see this in a minute as I show you how it's built. The personality is setting what's called the system prompt. And this can change the form of the response. You know, before we saw kind of a bulleted list with emojis, which was kind of catered towards an executive, uh, like a CEO, this response is more catered towards like a technical audience. Uh, so it's gonna give me a slightly more technical analysis and we can really cater how this response looks. So the way you can use this in practice is if you have a more uh, technical audience or more executive kind of audience or an audience focused in a certain business area, uh, you can direct the AI to kind of uh, respond in a way that makes the most sense for that person. Again, this is exactly what an analyst would do. They know who their audience is. Okay, so that's what it can do. Now let's see how we actually built this. Now this particular, particular example is using Snowflake as its backend, but this will work against any warehouse uh, where you have the ability to, to use AI. And generally we call this AI query. So this can be built on any kind of like dashboard or Sigma, we call this a workbook where you have a visualization, just pretty much everything that you're gonna do. You're always gonna end up with some kind of visualization. And all the action really happens behind this go button here. So let's click on that go button. Now I'm in the Sigma editor. And Sigma has a feature which is called actions that we see here on the left-hand side. And actions give us a kind of a low code, no code way of defining a sequence of business logic. I can apply uh, rules and, and take actions and set things like variables in here. And I can basically wire up the workflow and logic behind the scenes. So when I click that button, these seven actions I see on the left are being executed one after the other. So let's kind of go through these one by one. Uh, the first thing is this whole thing's called an action sequence. And you'll see at the very top is a check for is not null. And what's happening here is we just wanna make sure that when we click that go button, that the prompt has actually been filled out. Uh, if it hasn't been filled out, then we can just give you a message here. It says, ask a question, you'll get a response. But let's assume it has been filled out. They click go. Well, the first thing we're gonna do is set the response. And the response is right here. It's just this text box we see here. And pretty basic stuff. We're just gonna set it to a static value of thinking. So that way we give the user some feedback about what's happening. And the next two things we do is we set the system prompt and the user prompt. And these are the two standard things you need when you're running an AI query. The system prompt goes back to that personality. This is kind of the, the framing up of the question. And the user prompt is what you typed in over here combined with all the data that we're gonna pass into the AI. So to set the system prompt, we're gonna use this formula right here. So Sigma lets me wire in these formulas and these actions. And it's gonna do a, v, uh, a lookup, which is kind of like a V lookup in Excel. And the table that it's looking at right here, and that's located off here on the data tab. So I'm gonna switch over pages, kind of show you some of the behind the scenes uh, plumbing right here. And here we see the system prompts. 
And again, this is an input table in Sigma, which means I can just go in here and double click and I can start editing this. And whatever I type in here gets written back to the warehouse. In this case, we're writing it back to, to Snowflake. And I can just enter my prompt. So I have some, some canned prompts that are in here right now. And this just gives the, the model some instructions about how to answer uh, the question. And here you can tell things like, I want you to add in emojis, or I want you to answer in a specific style, or I want you to bullet these things, or I want you to use a lot of three letter acronyms that maybe executives wanna see. Or you can tell it that you want it to speculate uh, or not speculate about things that are that are happening out there. So that's how we set the system prompt. And really all we're doing is we're just looking up in the table to, to match the personality here uh, with what we see in the in the input table. So that's the lookup formula right here. Now, a lot of the work happens in this next step. This is where we set what's called the user prompt. And the user prompt is a combination of a few things. The first is we take the prompt that the person actually types in, and then we tell it to use the following data over here. Now, if you look at this formula, what it's really doing is it's creating a CSV representation of the data. So it has a header row of store region and month, and then it has all the actual uh, data down below it. And it's using this function list add distinct, which is gonna get all the unique values that are out there. So it's taking uh, all the data that's behind this chart and it's passing it into the model and it's concatenating that with the actual user prompt that the user typed in. So we've set our system prompt and we set our user prompt. And when I say we set it, what we're doing is we are, we are updating these different controls in Sigma uh, with these with these values here and these controls like the response here is a control uh, these act kind of like variables in in sigma and now comes the heavy lift this is where we actually call the ai uh, so in this case we're using a custom function in sigma just to make the syntax a little bit simpler and this one is called complete claude i'll show you this in a second but what we're passing in is exactly what we just set a few minutes ago, which is the system prompt and the user prompt. So the syntax for this is, is pretty straightforward. Now over here in this other tab, I have the custom function that we're calling. So this is the Snowflake, Snowflake version and in other warehouses, it would be similar. So in Snowflake, they use Cortex and they use the complete function. And this is what allows you to issue an AI type query. And this lets you pass in the large language model. In this case, we're using Claude Sonnet 3.5. And there are dozens of other models you can make available. Now here I have it hard-coded to Claude, but if you wanted to, you could even have a drop-down selector inside Sigma, which lets you select which model you want to use. And the rest of the syntax isn't terribly important, but you'll see that the system prompt and the user prompt are being referenced here. And because this syntax you know, is a little involved, we don't want the user to have to type this in each time. So we just wrap this into a custom function. This is a nice feature that Sigma has to make the syntax more accessible to business users. Uh, the next two steps, we'll kind of just skip the, over these because they're not important for this exercise. And then once the, the LLM returns with its reply, which may take you know, 10, 20, 30 seconds, uh, the final thing we wanna do is we wanna write that data back to a table. And again, we're gonna use that write back feature that Sigma has and we have an action which is called insert row, which will take the response that we got from that complete Claude uh, function, whatever the LLM returned, and we're gonna insert that response into the input table. And we're also gonna log things like what was the question or prompt that was asked, the personality, and some other information such as the username, the email, and also the, the timestamp. If we go over to our data tab here, we can see the, the raw input table that we're inserting into. That's this, that's, that's, that's this right here. This is the, the prompt log. So every time I click that go button, the AI runs and it writes a new row to this input table here. And when we saw the history tab before, we saw a version of the same table. This is just a, a kind of a cleaner version of that. 
and then all of these charts down here and also the summarize button here, they're all based on that, that same uh, input table that we just saw. So that's it. That's what it takes to wire up a ask a question uh, style interface into a workbook. And again, what's great about this is that you can do this anywhere in a Sigma workbook, any chart visualization, you don't even have to have a chart. If you want to just have a button on there or not even a button, you can just have it. So when you first open up a document, the AI just runs and you can change the personality type to kind of cater the response. Um, I've even used this to make newsletters uh, in Sigma. There's lots of applications for this. Uh, we showed you the ability to do comparative analysis. The steps for building this are a little different than what I showed you, but the heart of it is really the same. And we even were able to build a, a chat bot where you can ask multiple questions. You can ask follow-up questions. And again, constructed a little bit differently, but at the core of it, it's all kind of the, the same thing where we're taking the, the user prompt and we're taking the data and we're passing it into the model, getting a response, displaying it back on the screen, and then letting the, the end user be able to kind of analyze uh, all the questions that have been asked. So I hope you found this video very instructive on how to use uh, AI with Sigma. And thanks for watching.